All right, guys, we're here with another We Make Supplements podcast. My co-host, Sean, and I have a very special guest today. Right, Sean? We do, we do. I'm excited about this. Me too. Who is <laughs> The infamous legend of photography in the fitness industry, Ludwig Arroyo. Welcome, oh, welcome. Yeah, Thank welcome you, man. Thank we you. Make Supplements. Appreciate you guys having me down here, man. I'm so honored. So like, tell us, this is crazy. Tell us what you have. How do you like Pittsburgh? Oh, man. I, like, seriously, I would never come here again. <laughs> but the food here is amazing. Is ama it's like I've been a lot of places, as you know, and I, I don't think I've ever tasted anything so good. Couple, you went to a couple of uh, encores, key restaurants. I, I, I ate octopus for the first time in my life, and I he, the second he told me I was eating octopus, I was like, "Get out of here with that nonsense!" Like, who does that? <laughs> like octopus? I've seen that; it's nasty looking, and Please then I ate it, it. Yeah, and it was the best. It's the best taco I ever had. All right, better question. This is your first time touring a manufacturing facility. Yeah. What was that like? Um, again, I, so I've been shooting photography in, in the industry for eight, eight, nine, ten years, something like that. Um, dealing with brands and, and supplement manufacturers and shooting content for them, I've never been in, in, a, in a facility. And so to see the process of ingredients showing up to mixing to the whole process of encapsulating them, it's insane. It's, it's amazing uh, what goes into making supplements. You know? Cool. So I, I took notes and I'm starting my own. <laughs> nice, nice. My own manufacturing. What, what are you going to call it? I make supplements. I make supplements. What are you going to call it? What was it? Honey doll supplements. Honey do. Oh, okay. Honey okay. do supplements. <laughs> Honey do supplements. That's a good idea. It could, it could Done. Work. Done. You already have access to all the influencers. <laughs> yeah, and I stole some plans from back in, in there. <laughs> all right, well, Sean, I think the only topic that we should be talking about with Ludwig is influencers. Uh, yeah, interesting. Right? The good, the bad, the ugly. I, we got some more stories that we should be sharing. With yeah, you guys both have a, a lot of experience uh, with influencers. Me, not so much. So I'm kind of just like, I'm about to grab my popcorn, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Ask a few questions and, and just sit here and uh, listen. I feel like we should be charging for this episode. <laughs> We're going to go into these many details. I'm in. I'm in. Who goes first? I mean, I've got a question. Okay, what's your one question? Is one, one that I've been wanting to know. Like, So have you ever received a call from an influencer and based on whether you saw their content or the personality and just said, oh my God, I don't want to work with that person. You don't have to name the person, but I'm saying, have you ever just yeah. thought like, oh, geez, this is going to be a That's a, a great question. Task? That's a great question. And the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, th there, are, there are people out there that, um, so understanding what, what influencers do, you have to you have to get to the the point that influencers are there to drive business for brands, and so I, I I'm always looking at people's content, right? So there might be a girl that's on Instagram and she might have nine hundred thousand followers, right? And you're like, wow, that's that's gonna drive a lot of product sales. Well, not not until you find out eighty nine percent of her followers are males, um, and the all, first. <laughs> all all the content that she puts out is booty shots and. And, and nothing that's adding value to the consumer. Um, yeah, that girl might might entice another manager. No, nah, but uh, for me, it's like, you're not adding value. We're not gonna get you to the level where Nike or Target are, wanna, are, are gonna wanna use you in an ad. Um, that's not worth it. You, know? yeah, you can keep your 90% male audience that's thirsting. Man, I feel like when you look at these influencers, if they're not consistent with like positivity, then like, I just don't want to work with them. I'm gonna go ahead and name drop Bradley Martin, right? There's opportunities for us to work with Bradley, right? But this guy one week would be hating on brands and like just putting people on blast. And the next week be like, I'm all about positivity. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, let's join together in this fitness movement. Like, I, I mean, I don't know. There's just scenarios where I, I just feel like it doesn't make sense to work with certain people because what they're about doesn't align with what my goals are. So, so that brings me into another question. How different are a lot of the influencers that you guys have worked with from what you see on their social media platforms to when you actually meet them, whether it is the difference between, you know, they're all, they seem always down in the dumps and negative versus their page is always positive or whatever the case may be. Like how different are they? Or are there ones that have stuck out to you? Like, wow, this person is like they're, they're putting out on social media. It's a great question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you start oh, with that. Going yeah. <laughs> So uh, let's go down the laundry list of names. All right, so I'll pick two of my favorite influencers that are out there. Okay. Genevieve Ava, all right, and you're familiar with Jen. Yeah, yeah. So Jen is exactly what her pictures are in real life, and she's the sweetest person, and she's just amazing. 
And um, you know, I got a really good friend, Josh Hopkins, right? He used to be with us with G6. He's every bit as influential and inspirational in person with his stories and, and dealing with his PTSD and dealing with all the things that he's gone through in his life and his fitness journey. But then there's there's people out there that have like darkness in their story, right? Now they're unlike those two, but they're really lonely in real life, right? They're they're shooting those six hours a day to get that content, and the rest of their di- their day they're just miserable. And it's crazy when you find people yeah. like that, right? Then there's people that I meet and in person they're talking about totally different things, and nothing relates to what they're showing on social media, right? On social media they just have this persona that's almost like a character. And I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't align with that. Like yeah. Who I am on social media is who I am in real life. Whether I'm at work, talking to an influencer, on a date, it's, it's the same awkward garden no matter what. Yeah, and, and I'm going to piggyback on that. 100% there's, you have both. Um, I manage a client, her name is Paige Hathaway. She's, uh, you know, one of the things I hear clients say and, and fans say that when they're waiting hours in line to meet her is that she's exactly the same as she is. And she is. Like, and that's a, that's a power of her brand. And you can tell that when, and, you know, hopefully you'll get the chance to meet her. But there are other people. Most, I would say, if we we're to, uh, you know, do a pie chart and say who's really authentic and who's really that person, I would say 20 to 15 to 20% of the influencers you see are that person. I I would say wow. my yeah. 85% yeah, forget are. A, forget a pie chart. I want to see a Venn diagram. I want to just put the crazy <laughs> stuff over here, right? Then, like, yeah. the, like, the normal people, the people who care about money, and then, like, we'll put the thirst people, like, right in between. Yes. So, so that, that, that brings me to another question. I, I might have all the questions here because you guys are kind of the experts in this, and I don't know how many questions I could really answer for, for you guys. But, like, so when the influencers that you're working with or have worked in the past, I mean, are they really passionate about delivering an ROI for for the brands that they're working with or do you see a lot of like hey you know let's get that money and you know whatever happens with the the product sales or the product awareness and stuff like that is kind of not my problem I mean how passionate do they get about you know wanting to really deliver for brands the the good ones are extremely passionate and professional and so you get you get to this place where influencers are almost they run the spectrum just like an actor would you, you hear the stories about the rogue actor the guy who shows up to set late and doesn't care, but he's a super, he's like a, you know, Tony Stark, right? Like he, he's, he's an A-lister, he's an A-lister but he, they pay him the money, but he just doesn't care, just shows up, you know, mails it in. Uh, and then you get the super passionate actor, the guy that's really putting time and effort in. And same thing with influencers. And again, that segment is a small portion of the overall influencer. I, I know influencers that are like, they don't care. Um, when when they, when you see them at an expo, and here's how you know, like, watch watch the influencers that have a line of people waiting for them, and watch how they interact with their audience. Guy is just standing there. Someone shows up, takes a picture. You know, he's looking at his phone. He's got his girlfriend with him. You know, yeah, yeah. next person comes up. Hey, how you doing? Okay, take a picture. And then you see someone like a page. I hate to bring her up, but and and she's she's meeting everybody in line. Like she's walking to you online. She's engaging, asking questions really giving that fan that experience and she's doing it to the last person in line like we're in germany people don't even speak english all they say is uh selfie selfie and she's trying to have a conversation with them to make them feel important uh and so that but that's you know that's uh that's okay. just... real quick two things one tony stark is a saint okay we're not going to say he's the guy that shows up and doesn't care all the marvel fans at home don't get mad at us <laughs> i mean i meant robert downey jr but yeah, uh, yeah tony okay, stark I, is I, a robert saint. downey jr is also the man so we're not gonna go <laughs> I, I, meant, I meant robert downey circa 1989 <laughs> okay that, 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 uh second page just speaking about her right yeah. i remember uh being there when she had all these long lines with with us right yeah and uh, I was always shocked that the guys that would come repeatedly year after year at different shows, she would have a continued conversation with them, remembering what it was that they talked about the last time that she saw them in line. Yeah, yeah that's engaging. Like, that's I her superpower. I couldn't believe for it. Sure. That, for sure, that's her superpower. And like she'll meet you and make you feel like you're the most important person in the room. So to answer your question about ROI, she well, when we're dealing with brands and we're, we're dealing with deliverables, right? She's like, I want to make sure I, I give this uh, the best opportunity to be successful because I want to continue to work with this brand. Um, where, where I will say 90 to 85 percent of the rest of the influencers are just like, I want that check. Uh, let me just give you a half-assed deliverable uh, post or whatnot, and, and mail it in. It's pretty sick. It's, it's pretty. How, sick. how does that relate for someone like you that's either managing or shooting that? How do How do you feel about that when you're 
working with somebody that I mean I'm sure you're working with someone who's passionate about it does it bring out your your creativity in the content that absolutely you do versus like knowing that somebody's there just kind of going through the motions and they're not allowing you to be does that does that inhibit your creativity it does I mean obviously if, if someone like uh, someone like Paige is going to want to deliver the best result. You you have to do your homework. You got to say, listen, we want to deliver something different for this brand. Um, when, when we talk to, you know, there's other influencers that I might not even get involved in, in the decision-making process on deliver because they don't care. And, and then what it does is it leaves a bad taste in the mouth on, on the brand's part, right? And so now the brand may not look to use influencers in the future because they didn't get the ROI on this guy or that girl. Yeah. Um, you know, the yeah. problem is you don't get a Carfax on the influencer, right? You don't know whether the person's a diva until yeah. you start working with them. I mean, if there was only a Carfax, actually there is. <laughs> call, call me. I'm <laughs> I'll tell you all the deeds about that person. Or call Ludwig. Yeah. Ludwig will tell you whether they show up on time for the photo shoot, whether, uh, you know, they show up in shape. Oh. That, that's a big part. I, I remember we, we would have athletes show up to an expo not even in shape. Yeah. And then you'd have guys like Colin Wayne and Alex Michael Turner that show up ripped, more ripped than I've ever seen a man like ever in their lives. And like you appreciate it as a brand, right? People who actually care about showing up when you ask them to show up. Yeah, man, I, I, I can't say it better than that. Uh, you have you have people that um, show up to expos, and you're who you are on the fit, in the fitness industry because you're because not only because you're you know what you're saying on, on social, but because of your physique. People come to see that, I mean, you know, your amazing abs, or your amazing arms, and you're wearing an oversized sweater, you know, or, you, you know, you're not showing any abs, and, and people are going to take that one photo with you yeah. that they're going to remember forever, and you're, co you're all covered up, you know, so th that's not, like, next time you go to an expo, just pay attention. Yeah, I'm going to now, now that You'll I'm see the difference, for, yeah. you know. All right, Sean, I got a question for you. Yeah. All right, so when companies you, you and guys, brands... You guys need me to leave? <laughs> no, 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 man. <laughs> So when companies or brands work with influencers, I know there's brands out there that will hire an influencer for a month and then fire them. Yeah. Right. And then they try to take what they can out of that influencer, they then let them go. And then, you know, the business model of influencers kind of gets ruined at that point. Right. Influencers stop trusting brands. Right. I mean, I, I could drop some names as the brands that do this, but I mean, what do you think is the right way to manage an influencer relationship? And let's just say as a brand, right, you're, you're, it's K, okay. you're not putting an effort into making this work. What do you do? Do you hire an influencer manager to help manage that relationship? Do you just let them go? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've always we've always had influencers that we we've never because we do a lot of manufacturing and, and our brand side of our business is a, is not as big as our manufacturing side. We've never worked with the you know I'll call a list influencers, right? So we've had a lot of micro influencers and stuff like that, and so a lot of those uh, people there is more of a relationship there, right? Because they're trying to get their name out. Yeah. They're wanting to be associated with a brand that you know is considered a national brand. At the same time, you know we're not paying the the huge expense as we would be for say an A-lister. So to me, I think I've, my experience has always been we've had more relationship and we're constantly trying to make it work for each other, right? We're tr we're trying to help them. We're you know putting their. Uh, profiles and stuff on our pages and we want them to grow their following and, and they're kind of you know so we're like helping each other out along that process versus so things that I think you guys are more familiar with which is somebody who's bringing a lot of potential ROI for a brand so my experience has always been relationship driven and we've tried to make it work and it usually lasts for a pretty long time as opposed to just saying hey this isn't working out you know we're, we're not going to do this any longer. Now I have a question. Uh, how do you think that drive? Would you ever invest in an A-list influencer? Uh, that's a great question. One of your brands, small, you know, one of your in-house brands, or, or, or yeah, that's a great question. My eyes are so wide right now. I know. I was gonna say, uh, gonna please, say? please defer to Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's a good question. I don't understand as much as is Encore. I know that for sure. I definitely watched how when the algorithms on social media change right. and not only saw firsthand on a, on a smaller scale, but also been involved in a lot of conversation with other brands and stuff like that, that did see the ROI uh, drop off pretty quickly, right? And so I've, I've been curious to kind of ask you guys with the A-listers. I mean, you got somebody who has three, four, five million reach and, and they're putting out um, content uh, associated with a brand like what's the true reach of that without having to the brand having to pay for more of that reach and and how do you get that ROI with the algorithms changing right and, and that's, that's a great question that's actually why I asked you is because there's a big debate now macro versus micro influencers 
And <clears throat> to me, I think the, I think the strategy has to be based on the budget on the, from the brand, right? I can understand a brand not having the amount of money to be able to pay an A-lister and then and just go out and pay the, the, the micro-influencers uh, to spread the word. However, having an A-lister, regardless of the fact that the reach has diminished over the years because of the algorithm, A-listers, what they do is a good one is going to give you brand equity, right? Uh, 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 they're going to they're gonna be able to put the brand on the map at a larger scale. Someone like uh, someone who has 4.5 million followers, 5 million followers, and it's a global audience. Um, depending on your brand strategy, it's definitely beneficial to go with them because you can hit more people yeah. quickly. Um, and, you know, borrowing her brand equity or his brand equity, it's going to help your brand get established. So it really depends on you know the journey that your your brand yeah. is on. A brand new starting out out of the gate probably not going to be able to afford a A lister. Well, that um, goes back to what we were talking about earlier, right? So that's where I would lean. I I would want to trust the influencer I'm doing business with. We had the conversation about ones that want to return, uh, you know, give an ROI to, yep. to the brands they work with, ones that are passionate, willing to put in the time, want to feel like they're part of the brand. And I would want to lean on somebody that has a relationship with the person that kind of assures me, hey, this is what you're getting into versus just kind of cold calling influencers that have a large audience and not knowing what you're getting right. into. Right. And I would almost compare this to movies, right? If you're an indie filmmaker and you want to get an A-list celebrity, I mean, you have to have someone that really believes in your script yeah. and really yeah. believes in you know you as a talent, as a director or as a producer to make that indie. That's a good point. But you're not going to be able to utilize that person as well as a, as a major studio can because a major studio is going to do the press tour where you know they're interviewing with every talk show, where they're on every radio station promoting the movie. And like some brands just don't realize that they're an indie and they're trying to act like a studio. Yes. And some people are studios acting like they're indies. And some influencers are, are indie or C-list that think they're A-list. Some, some influencers are Q-list, like forget C, that's <laughs> real high up there. Right. And so I think, I think the reality is that people need to understand who they are and like the influencer can't be the one thing that you put into the equation that changes everything. Right, you have to you have to build a whole business around an influencer yeah. for it to work. Yeah, you gotta yeah. have the budget to support it. To you gotta have the budget to support it. It's gotta be part of the overall strategy. So, uh, you know, what I like to do is talk to brands about whether or not they're spending in magazines and stuff. We we obviously see the decline in, in magazine ad spend, right? So take the, some money away from magazines, put it into influencer. You're gonna get a big ROI. Put it into Facebook ads and, and points per click and all that stuff. I don't want. There's uh, still brands spending money in magazines. They, yes. What are you doing? Yes. Yes, and I can't believe it, but they are, they are they're going they're going story? all in on magazines. Yeah, yeah so, um, I'm not going to name the magazine because I'm still good friends with the, the sales agents that are over there, but uh, major fitness magazine that might be involved with the Olympia asked us to you know buy pages in their magazine, and uh, us being a new brand, we're like, yeah, we totally want to do this. First month we did it, nothing happened, nothing grew. I'm like, you know what? I'm on Gregor. I'm going to be a little crazy. We're going to put an ad that says, get your free bottle. All you have to do is go to this website and tell us where to ship it. And, and you know, my designs are dope. I know how to do call to action with the offers and everything. Guess how many bottles we shipped? How many? Throw out a number. Uh, a thousand. Big fat zero. Not one person not wanted one, a free bottle. Not one person visited the website. Wow. Let alone What year was this? <laughs> 2013. Wow. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I, I, it makes sense. I, I so just so, so now, just for perspective, if you if you ran a digital ad, let's just say with a thousand dollar budget or a five thousand dollar budget on Facebook, offering a free bottle or a free free fat burn or whatever it is, how how different would that be today? I mean, it depends if we're charging for shipping or not. If there's no shipping and the person just has to fill out the form and then get through that whole process without putting credit card information, five hundred thousand bottles, easy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. If you, after after they fill out the whole form and now they're on a credit card form, you're gonna have a huge drop off. Probably, I'd say 80, 90% of people are not gonna put in their, their shipping information. Just is what it is. But before we cut off, because we have Ludwig, I gotta ask Ludwig what he thinks about influencers are launching we, their own brands. What are we cutting off for? Well, we try to keep these under 20 minutes. No, no, we're going 40 then. There's a, there's a bunch of millennials. That's what Mike told me, right? You said? An hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> no, Mike's in charge. So go ahead. <laughs> what do you think about? I knew you were going to do that with Mike today. <laughs> what do you think about influencers launching their own supplement lines? Is this no, a, a smart idea? Is this yeah. a not a smart mm -hmm. idea? 
What do you, what do you think? Uh, I, I used to think it was a, it was the coolest thing. Because uh, your line of thinking is, man, uh, Kai Green is the biggest name in, 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 uh, in bodybuilding. He should have his own brand. But what you find is these brand, the, the people that have been buying supplements, most of them are brand loyal. So you take these all these big names like, let's say, like an Optimal Nutrition. No one's going to stop buying that to buy Kai Green's product. Uh, it's tried and true or C4, that, you know, that product. Uh, so I, I think it's a great idea for someone like a, for a big name in the industry to start their own product. But I would not associate, I would not let the world know that I am the face or it's my brand. I wouldn't call it Kai Green Supplements and have my face all over it. I partner up with another brand. And, Partnerships. Yeah. And, and do it because I, I, I think mean, we, people we need saw to trust that. With that. Jennifer Lopez, right? I think she tries a lot. I mean, she's a, yeah. an A list megastar. And yeah. She and launched a supplement line. And Mark Wahlberg, yeah, and that, J-Lo. Yeah. And the other thing, too, is uh, launching a supplement brand is such hard work because you don't, it's not just one time that you like put it out to the world. You got you to get distribution, right? You got to get, even if you're selling online, you still want to get presence. So you're traveling to India doing. Doing your, you know, your presses, your press uh, circuits out there, and going to Asia, trying to break into that market, going to South America. That's that's all of your time. If you're trying to do other things, it's it's just not practical. So I I'm 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 against it in the sense of putting your name all over it. This is my brand. I own it. My name is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, partnering brand, with a manufacturer or somebody else launching exactly. it and kind of being an influencer with it and having right. some maybe ownership stake or something like that is fine. Just right. not putting your name on okay, it. Let's switch the vibe real quick. Let's go to a positive message. Okay. If you are an influencer with over 3 million followers, how could you successfully launch a line? Uh, like we just said, I think you, you would partner up with a, an existing manufacturer. Okay, STC um, Nutrition, not you, a yeah, manufacturer. Yeah, no, no, you would, <laughs> you would partner up with STC nice plug, Nutrition nice <laughs> and you would, uh, you would call it something cool and uh, and get other influencers on board right away and then and go for it and let the brand live on its own uh with you as a as an influencer yeah, as opposed to calling cool. it you know encore supplements and, and, and that, hoping overnight success overnight, <laughs> overnight success all right so if you're an influencer out there with more than three million followers what you need to do is get some real strong business advice, in my opinion. One hundred percent. I feel like most of these influencers don't don't understand. Or some of them do, but most of them don't understand sales funnels. They don't understand uh, essentially the different verticals that happen with supplement sales. Right? There's the direct to consumer. There's the e marketplaces like Amazon, Rocky Ten, uh, Jet, so on and so forth. Then there's the brick and mortar, right? With the, the specialty shops, the nutri shops, the vitamin shops, GNC, so on and so forth. And then of course there's big box retail. And each one of those has to have a different marketing effort. And you either have to get like a brand manager to kind of support you because mm -hmm. the influencer has to run their, their full-time business of being an influencer and do the second project at the same time. Right. And I feel like most influencers that try to launch their own brand choose a really, really, really terrible brand manager. Some guy pitched them a dream and this is why I think they're failing because I think that guy doesn't understand the four channels. Absolutely. Right? And I think that's the problem, right? Someone just sees a big name and they're like, hey, Let's launch this company. I'm going to help you do clothing lines, supplements, this, that, and the other. And I think influencers are are getting duped. 100, 100. They're getting sold on the dream, and they don't they don't understand uh, how to partner up with the right people. Like you said, understanding what strategies work and what verticals, uh, and and they're getting fooled. Uh, it's similar to like, and listen, a, a great a big name athlete doesn't translate into a big name supplement company. So it's just like you know, Michael Jordan is not a great basketball coach or an owner. You know, he's a horrible one. LeBron just launched his own supplement line. And no. <laughs> Ladder, no. Ladder's doing great. Is it? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, he's LeBron. He's going to sell bottles, but is LeBron, it? come on the show. Tell us how you're doing. <laughs> Kamara Aurora, help, help make that happen. I, I think uh, Kevin Hart launched a, a multivitamin. Kevin has his own line, too. Yeah. I, I think they can all do make some noise and make some quick cash. But when, when you're comparing that, that brand to, let's say, Omega, you know, if Kevin Hart launched... Omega three fat uh, product and is it is it gonna is it gonna compare to the sales that Omega's been doing for years and years and years and 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 the brand that they have? I doubt it. Well, I mean, Kevin's launching more of a lifestyle. I'm just saying, if, just to compare apples to apples. But yeah, yeah, we'll. I mean, we'll see. We'll There's see. definitely gonna be success stories. You know what I think? I mean, he's, a lot he's, more he's got a huge following. He's, he's gonna sell products, but is it gonna? I think Will Smith needs to launch a supplement line. He just gets it. Like he's social smart. media business, whatever it is. I mean, this thing with Just Water, it's killing the game. He's he's brilliant. 
And he's brilliant in his social strategy, his content, he's funny, he's witty, uh, he's relevant. Um, everything that Sean is. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, I think this is a great episode. Ludwig, thanks for coming. Oh, thank experience. you for having me. Yeah, no, this it's is been good. This is uh, fun to fun to talk with both of you guys. Yeah, it's been fun to be here, man. Next time you guys want to come out, bring me out. I'm here. Cool. Just pay for everything. Perfect. Okay. I, I got one more question though. Oh, before we oh, go. Oh, let's, let's, I got one more question. Yeah. How have you seen? And I, I just been wanting to ask this, but it wasn't really on topic with where the discussion was going. Cool. But as you see things go from still pictures to video on on social platforms, yeah. Instagram and stuff like that. How does that affect you personally in the work that you do? Have, have you started to transition that or do you not see still pictures going away completely and so you're kind of staying there? I'm just trying to understand. That's a, that's a, that's a great question. I think stills are, are, are always going to be uh, necessary to, to drive message instantly. I, I think our attention span as culture is still pretty small. Video consumption is high. It's on the rise. It's going to continue to rise. I'm not. I'm never going to pick up... I, I never say never, but I'm never gonna pick up the camera and become a videographer. I don't care about that. I'll find somebody else to do that. Uh, but the other thing too is that with your cell phone now, like I think you can create quality content with just selfies and, and the video and throwing yeah, this. Yeah. And so I don't think my job is in jeopardy. People still want still images. You, you're always gonna sell products with, with you know, a poster in 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 the supplement store. And so I'm still there. I'm still relevant in that sense. Um, but it's never going to move me to the point where I have to pick up a video camera. Like to me, uh, you know, if I'm going to create content for a brand and they don't need a video guy, I'll bring in a video guy. Yeah, okay. You know, cool. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be that guy. And forget you know? everything you just said. We need to get a hologram of a, some guy talking, like, like a Joey Swole in a GNC <laughs> store telling someone to buy, you know, rye supplements. I mean, that <laughs> might that be the, the 80, <laughs> 80 years from now future is just holograms. Yeah. Next uh, year. No. Nah, nah, Next yeah. year. Then I'm out of business, man. <laughs> <I'm having> holograms. <laughs> But uh, yeah. So I think that was our episode for today. Thanks so much for coming down, Budwin. Thank you for having yeah, me. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome.